Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into my video. Today we're going to take a look at this Sony STR-D311 audio video receiver. I believe this thing puts out about 70 or 80 watts per channel, so it's pretty good. Uh, this particular receiver belongs to a coworker of mine and has told me that the uh, speaker selection for B, channel B, uh, stopped working. So when there's speakers hooked up to B and B is selected, there's no sound or it's very little sound or something. So when I hooked it up and tested it before uh, filming, uh, I could hear some sound, but it's very distorted and doesn't sound right. But when I play with the switch, it can kind of come back. So uh, I have a feeling it's just a dirty switch. But we're just gonna take this thing apart. We'll do a visual inspection on all the components inside, make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary, see if we can get access to these switches and either clean if possible or replace the switch if it's one of those sealed switches and see what we can uh, figure out there and then see if we can clean the volume and the uh, bass treble all that kind of stuff see what we can do uh, I've never taken one of these apart before so bear with me but we're gonna first see uh, if we can get this panel off looks like there's some screws here so without further ado let's jump into it all right so to take this panel off I've noticed that there are a total of five screws there's two Let's see, there's one here, one back here, one directly in the back here, and then two more on this side. And then it should just slide up and out or pop off or something, so we'll figure that out. So let me get those screws out and I'll get back to you. All right, we got the cover off here. As you can see, it's not terribly dirty in there. It's just a little dusty. So I have some compressed air here. I'm going to blow out uh, some of the dust here. Let's see how bad it is. Especially when you get in these heat sinks here because the power transistors are mounted to it. bad at all actually it's a little dusty all right now that it's somewhat clean we can look inside uh let's go ahead and perform a visual inspection on the uh, electrical components here so let's take a look looks like heat sinks power transistors all look okay i mean it's hard to tell by just looking at them but transformers here there is a relay here it's probably a uh, protection relay it's all plugged in everything looks good going over to this board here these must be the filtering caps for the power supply <clears throat> to ripple out the uh, uh, AC coming in from the wall another relay here some ceramic resistors some capacitors that look okay this receiver is not super old so I'm not expecting these caps to be bad uh, but I'm just checking to see if one has blown up or is leaking, bulging, etc. But they all look okay. I'm trying to see what brand they are. Can't read them. I need a magnifying glass. But it actually looks okay, surprisingly. I don't see any burn marks on any resistors, like something's gotten hot. Uh, I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. So let's go ahead and move on to attempting to clean the switches so for that we're going to need to figure out how to remove this faceplate i think there's three screws up here on top and there's two or three on the bottom and i think it just and we have to remove the knobs of course and i think this whole thing will slide off so let me figure that out and then uh, once it's off i'll jump back to you All right, now we have access to the speaker selection here. They are not 100% sealed. I can actually see an opening in between the spring here that goes back into the switch. I think I can put the nozzle of the contact cleaner in there. So let's go ahead and give that a whirl. So let's start with the uh, questionable one here. The one that is definitely dirty because it doesn't work. Oops, I had it. Push back that spring. Oh, 
work that cleaner around. Let's see if I can get it in from this angle. It's nice and clean. Let's get this guy. There we go. Let's see if there's any other spots above that I can get in at. Top here, you probably can't see on camera. There we go. Cool. This should be clean. I'll probably do it one more time before we assemble it all back together. Next, we're going to go take a look at the face plate and see if the switches on those can be clean because. A few of them are kind of a little sticky. Maybe someone spilled something in there or something. But let's see if we can clean that out and get those working 100% uh, again. So let me get the camera adjusted and then I'll get back to you. So I'm bored with all the footage of taking this board out. They're held in with all these little plastic tabs here. Spent some time pulling them all out. Take a look at the switches in there. They're all sealed. There was just some gummy stuff. I wiped them up and now the switches are clean and free. Uh, it's really nothing special in there or anything really worth showing you guys. <laughs> so that's basically that. They were all sealed switches. They can't be serviced, all that stuff. So I think we're ready to reassemble it. And then we're going to test it by hooking it up to the oscilloscope and checking out, doing a frequency sweep and looking at the output that this thing produces, making sure that we get a clean output on speaker A and on speaker B, which was the, trouble, the troubled uh, channel. So let me go ahead and get this thing reassembled, get the oscilloscope set up, and then uh, we'll run a frequency sweep through it and see what happens. receiver all put back together my phone is hooked up the oscilloscope is hooked up to the speaker b output so the one that was giving us issues we're going to go run a frequency sweep through it to see uh, how clean the sine wave is all the way through the audio spectrum i have it set from 50 hertz and it will stop at 20,000 hertz so pretty much the uh, full audio spectrum we're going to see how this thing looks how clean the wave looks uh, if you look at the top here this is where uh, you'll see what frequency we're at for now, we're going to start at 50. I'm going to go ahead and push auto set on this. And I'm going to go ahead and push play. So let's see what happens. See how it looks. So far, so good. Doesn't look distorted. Approaching 2000 hertz here. See if it changes with the volume. No distortion there. Good. Nice, I am loving the way this sine wave looks. <laughs> looks really clean, actually. Surprisingly, very, very, very clean. The peaks look good. I don't see any noise around any of the peaks. Looks great. I think we got this thing working 100% again. Approaching 10,000 hertz here. Getting higher up. So far, so good. I think we got this thing dialed. It was a pretty easy fix. We actually didn't have to make any repairs. I thought we may have to replace that speaker selection switch because they are not serviceable. But I was able to put the straw of the contact cleaner in there and get it to work, I guess. So that's a plus. I'm very happy with this. I know my coworker will be happy with it. Easy fix. Approaching 15,000 hertz. Still looks very clean. That's awesome. Looks 
very good. Very happy with the way this looks. This amp's in good shape. Approaching 20,000 hertz here. Still just looks super clean. It's a tiny, tiny bit of noise at the peaks as you would expect at that high frequency, but still is clean and that's it. So I think that'll be it for this video. We didn't really have to do any repairs, uh, just cleaning. So I hope this video uh, can help you out if you have one of these receivers and you have uh, dirty switches just like this one had, or if you just want to figure out how to take it apart. So I think that'll be it. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions, and uh, thank you for watching.